Hello, hello, and welcome back, everyone. You are watching LunaCon. It is the first day. We just saw a wonderful, wonderful in-game concert live performance by the Songbirds. And now this is the part you guys have probably been waiting for. We'll see about that in a second. But we do have some contests to talk about. And first off, we are starting with the housing contest. And for that, we do have the judges here as well as Sam, who is going to be guiding us through the entries and the contests in itself. But let's first start out with Lermi. Because Lermi, you were kind of more or less, uh, what do you call it? responsible for making this housing contest happen, right? Yes, uh, I have been doing the housing contest last year already and uh, I continue doing it and this year we decided to uh, put a theme on it and the theme this year is Light vs Darkness since it's the overarching plot for the last 10 years of this game. Oh, you see, that, that's, a, that's what I like, right? It, it, it's coming back taking a step back looking at what we've been having throughout this history and then making it and putting it out there um through obviously these amazing contests and i think that's just such a really cool idea it is indeed but of course you need some judges for the contests, and one of these judges was wrath games hello hello game how's it going oh i think we're all doing great how are you doing Oh, I'm doing fantastic. This this convention has been wonderful so far. The songbirds were popping off. That was a beautiful experience. And I'm excited to, to look through the houses again. Oh, yeah. I'm definitely excited as well. We're going to head into those entries in just a second. But last but not least, I think we have one of the sexiest voices on the panel for today. It is Sly, a.k.a. Gray Fox. Oh, stop it. Hello. Hello, Lyricon. How you doing? Ooh. So, so such an amazing voice, and uh, oh my you, god! Listen, you just you make me feel things, Sly. You make me feel things. <laughs> <laughs> but yes, like Lithy has been saying, we have a lot of amazing entries to be going through. And Sly, what have you been thinking about all of the houses that have been put on so far? Oh, I'm just really looking forward to seeing like a lot of like I'm a housing enthusiast, so. I I might, you know, take a few ideas here and there from uh, from what we see today. And and, and obviously su supplant that for your own housing needs, right? Oh, oh yeah. You go in oh, there. Yeah, definitely. And you, that's, that's exactly what I do when it comes to, like, pretty much anything in my life. I see someone doing it better than me, and then I'm like, okay, I got to do it like them now because they, they know what they're doing. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, you gotta take a bit of inspiration because, like, I I'm creative, but the the creativity I see from so many uh, community members out there is just way beyond what I what I could do. Exactly, it, it, and and that's what makes contests like these a lot of fun because now we're gonna see uh, people who have been putting their best foot forward, and obviously, it's a very difficult process to have to choose which one is oh, yes. the best so it's like they, like so i think we should maybe have a little bit of a walkthrough right uh, on on what goes into making that decision happen there and what like how how, how are you how are you able to do it and we'll start with you slide i'm looking at a lot of things I'm looking at like composition um if there was if there was a central theme you know and how everything comes together I, when because as Long story short, I, uh, outside of Final Fantasy XIV and content creation, I do restoration work, and every time I see all these beautiful houses, and every I get to go see these beautiful houses, and I see pictures that my technicians send me, and and so I, I kind of supplant that uh, into fourteen when it comes to housing, even though you can be a lot more creative and do a lot, do just use your imagination when it comes to creating stuff within 14. That's really awesome, though, being able to take real-life inspiration when you get out there. That's, that's awesome, though, Slide, that you do restoration work in the IRL world, and 
yeah, it's, it's, it's those cool things that you start to think about and then you're able to go back and forth between the two. And so now the same question to you, though, Rath, when it comes to the judgment process, what are some of the things that you were looking for and some of the processes and techniques that you were um, uh, applying? So we have the fancy theme, right? It's got to be light versus dark. That's the big thing we're going for. Uh, there's There's a lot of different ways you can take that. There's a lot of different angles you can go at it to, to make it be a light versus dark theme. But a lot of them, you really, it's either you, you go super dark with lighting and you have some contrast with the things around, but you want to make sure that when you when you have all the stuff going around, it's not just uh, it's not just a lot of clutter, you know? It's got to be organized, it's got to be nice. Everything has to be useful to that theme in the house when you're walking through it. Right, yeah, so it, it, it's those little things that comes about, right, when it, you're trying to figure everything with the, with how the houses work, with how it's supposed to tie into the theme, and that's what always makes, one of the reasons why I'm glad I'm not a judge, right, is, first of all, the monumental amount of pressure, I feel like, when you're looking at all of these amazing houses, then having to choose, mm. and that to me is always one of the toughest parts, because I look at something and I'm like, yeah, this is 10 out of 10. This is amazing. This is this is the greatest thing I've ever seen. And then the next entry comes and I'm like, oh yeah, it's 10 out of 10, greatest thing ever. It's beautiful, amazing. it's perfect. This is incredible. Exactly, it's the a work of art. Good. It just, it's just, uh, they're all so good. It, it's, it's a work of art. This is, this inspires me to be a better person. I, yeah. it, it, but, it, but that's why, that's why Sly, I'm, you know, I'm glad I'm not a judge. And that's why also too, when looking at what all of you have been able to do and what you have been able to show off here. Yeah, I, I, I'm just, I'm not envious. It's definitely a hard choice this time. But we'll, we'll see. We'll get the, the nice walkthrough. We can show off how cool these houses are either way. There, there yeah. was nothing submitted that was not incredible. Everything here was fantastic. Well, you heard it here from the mouths of the judges. Everything here is incredible. But of course... Only three winners had to be chosen. So, without further ado, I'm going to go ahead and leave things over to Lermy to walk us through everything that has taken place. Yes, uh, to to go really quickly into my judging process, um, the easiest thing uh, to do always is just visit the house in uh, in the game and just uh, let just yeah let it just work with you and just see if everything is like not cluttered if the items are not uh if the items are like presented well and uh yeah without further ado we can go to the first entry i guess because we have uh entry number one is uh aria waha uh wana here from behemoth um their description of their house is light versus dark, black versus white, night versus day. This is the Phantom Divine. And again, from the from the first shots, you can see from you can see definitely see that contrast straight down the middle from light versus dark, and I love that about this one. Uh, just really direct in in the theme um obviously you have the dark on the left and the light on the right and again it, it, it it's really good in terms of the theme it was very strong as well that they had it's it's easy when you're doing this kind of thing to get stuck into the one side right because you've got mm -hmm. the dark side and then you they added that contrast of white to it rather than just making yes. that side the full black side versus the full mm -hmm. white side on the other it it yes. really makes it pop out a lot more from all these angles. And again, there's this doesn't feel cluttered. This feels everything in here seemed meaningful. It was it was it, very strong it, placements. It's a really open space, which I really always like. And um, mm -hmm. it just the moment you go in, it just screams light versus darkness. Mm -hmm. It's a tr yeah, like I'm looking at it right now, and I'm letting it process inside of my brain. Yeah, this is. Well, like I said, once again, you know, I'm not, I'm not one of the judges, but this is still a very 
to me, it's just intricate. It's so the juxtaposition between, like you all have been saying, the light and the dark. Yeah, it's it's truly amazing. All right, and I think Lermy, that should be our go ahead to take a look at the next entry. Mm -hmm. uh, our second entry is uh, from Brynhilde, Muda Moon, and their description is uh, decided to see how uh, I do as a console player, made a boss room that could be an early level RPG. Don't underestimate the small mob in the room. The shadows reveal the true boss, and I believe we have a video. This is the bit from earlier with as well. Rather than using the colors specifically for the light versus dark, it's a very light-based, uh, trying to have that dark room with the faint glow to catch your eye with all the, the shiny bits at the end. It is a, a beautiful, beautiful scene. And I cannot imagine how they put this together. This must have taken hours. One thing that really, really draws me in is the like like you said light versus dark but then i've been immediately captured by the the shadow that the light gives off of the mob in the, in the middle of the room that was that's just too cute i love it hmm. yeah instead of the composition being light versus dark it's, it tells more a story of light versus dark which is a different hmm. approach but still very effective and of course it's just so 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 much detail and I, I it's just amazing how uh how much work we got put into there and the other thing to remember is that for these houses these were all in apartments right let me yes um to give so... everyone a even playing field uh we decided to make it apartments so uh, we, you don't have a, like a small and a medium and a large because you have like more space to work with so uh, we decided to make it a an apartment so everyone has like the same like feel to play with just the idea with a lot of these uh the scale that you can feel from this specific house and remembering that this is an apartment is insane it's it's a crazy experience yes once again another moment in time where i'm going to be picking my jaw up off of the floor <laughs> it is a monument to the creativity of the community but there is still one more entry left for us to go through actually two more apologies two more so two more i don't know how to count all right counting is very hard as a host i don't have to i never learned numbers how to get that hard. far numbers are yeah, really hard okay right, so, right. <laughs> very true. but learn me i am going to leave you for our third entry yes entry number three uh again from brynhilder is uh Sophia moon yani and the description is a moody yet cozy Ishgardian apartment for my character. The theme of light versus darkness is represented both by the overall division of one space, one room dark, the other one white, and also by the contrasting details, lighting and themes of each room on their own. And we have lost the video. Once again, with all of these meaningful placements to, to truly, rather than this seeming like uh, an amateurish clutter for just putting something on the ground to fill space that gave a story with all the books cluttered around that bookshelf, the very mm. faint lighting coming in through the window. It's, it's just a beautiful framework on these scenes. There's, this is a living room, right? This is, someone lives in this house. It's, it's an incredibly put together piece. Right, I, I love, I, I definitely love the the separation uh, for this one and, and starting out in the dark and then going into the light and having and having the light pierce the dark in the first one. And, and, and like you said, the, this is a, this is a living space. I, I can, I can definitely imagine myself, you know, just resting here just you know relaxing here in both spaces both light and dark so yeah i agree with you that this space does really come alive in terms of the theme yes uh 
Well, a little, a little uh, thing for me. It's just in the Lightroom, you didn't see as well in, in the pictures or the video. Uh, I'm a sucker for diagonal space, uh, diagonal spacing. And uh, yes, I just it, it triggers something in me. It's just yes, somebody <laughs> like doesn't isn't going like like a, like a square. Mm-hmm. But nice yeah, because diagonal is. spacing. Yeah. I'm sorry. Uh, diagonal Maybe spacing like, is hard to hard to pull off. It's oh, really God, hard yes. to pull off yes. IRL, yeah. IRL and in game. So just seeing them make use of that, like you said, is is really it's chef's kiss. I am so thankful to have you three here because you have put into words what I've been <laughs> like feeling right now. And then you mentioned diagonal spacing, and I'm like, wait, that's what yeah, it is. Yeah. It all makes sense now. <laughs> and mm. what? I, I, I agree with everything that you all have been saying, and especially with the lived-in feel, right? This feels like a cozy, a nice cozy little space that you can go into after a hard day of being a warrior of light and just chill out, and relax, and enjoy some time off. And that's, I think, yeah, what, I, what I'm feeling and loving most about uh, this particular entry. But well, it, it really, really fantastic stuff once again. But... Our final entry, for sure this time, I counted it out while you okay. all were talking. I counted it out. Sure. Trust me. Sure. <laughs> I'm pretty sure anyways. But yeah, yes, Mods, our can we double check the math on that real quick before we get this in? <laughs> yeah, I, I need a mod check. Mod check for the host, please. <laughs> <laughs> but our fourth no and final entry. No math while I'm entry. producing. Not happening. <laughs> Learn me. <laughs> take it away. Yes. Uh, from Dalera, entry number four, Irving Impertain. The description of their apartment is... Uh, when a summoning to bring back a dear friend goes awry, the summoner must fight back the darkness, taking over his home. Uh, and then he apologized for the baby you shaking this. This is his first time recording something. Mm-hmm. Hmm. For a first time, it is gorgeous. It is similar to the first entry, like the hard cut between light and darkness. Mm-hmm. But it's also not like you only have like dark on the one side and like what I on the other side. You have like some uh, mix and match, which uh, helps a lot. Yeah. Feels very more towards the, the magical sense of light versus dark, especially with the, the character that they have there with their retainer statue. Uh, a, a beautiful piece, especially the the general choice for the furniture items they've used is very cohesive. It, it does, like they, like they had said with their description, it tells a very strong story about what this is, how this happened, where this came from. It's very, a very solemn piece. And I will say one thing about this, and like everyone has done this well, but I feel drawn to this more. It made great use of the space they're given. Mm-hmm. And uh, like, I, I feel, I, I feel like this, it, it gives the illusion that it's way bigger than what it actually is. And again, that's again, great use, great, item placement great furniture placement and then the 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 use of the theme of dark and light and again we've seen this in every every entry so far but contrasting those putting the putting the the dark the dark puddle into the light and vice versa so again really great use of the space and as uh, as chat is mentioning there is the the fighting there, the the Z fighting on the floor that you could see in some of the videos. But if anything, that almost kind of adds to it as it sort of sees this as if the, from the description with this piece going awry, it's almost like the dark side of the room is devouring the light side of it. It's a pretty, it's a pretty positive piece for how weird some of this housing can be. Mm -hmm. I like that a lot. take something going on there that could be seen as a bug but give it that little bit of an extra layer and Mm -hmm. a little bit of extra meaning to it and once again a 
another fantastic entry and that is going to be all of the entries for our housing contest portion now of course what is a contest without winners and what is winners without the prizes that they yeah. are going to be getting Ooh, right a lot of really cool things on the line here so we're going to start off with third place talking about what they're going to be getting which is five million gil that's a pretty good Ooh. amount Incredible. right Incredible. for third place that's a pretty penny. Incredible. That is a pretty penny, but just you wait until you hear what second place is going to be getting, which is 10 million gil and ooh. A, ooh, right? a soft shaded warrior of light chibi artwork from Silver Gecky. Incredible. Right? Incredible. Really, mm. really phenomenal stuff to go for our second place. Now, finally, for our first place they winner. Share a they share a glass will... of pilk with you? Rathless. Is that is that first place? Oh, oh boy. Listen. Oh, boy. <laughs> oh okay. That's uh that that's between me and first place, okay? <laughs> 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 However, first place will be getting 20 million. Woo! That's right, 20 million gil. And just imagine how hard that would be for me to count up to. And no, good luck. a half body warrior of light illustration from Silver Geki. So a lot hmm. of really cool prizes here for our three winners and i think that we should go ahead and start off with our third place winner Lermy, if you would like to take over for that of course uh, but first i want to thank everybody who uh, participated in that contest and still Geki for kindly offering their art for this for the prizes mm -hmm. and um third place goes to aria uh wanahili and you number one yeah yeah once again beautiful piece very strong contrast in colors i think a lot mm -hmm. of this is just how perfectly symmetrical this came through as it it gained, it gained a lot off of that and a lot of it just popped out with the the back lighting for this dark side it's it's a beautiful beautiful piece yeah again like was drawn by the contrast and then like just straight up the like I, I I hate to call it the, the two face effect, but just that like what it just, is, yeah, mm -hmm. it yeah. is yes. Well, a big congratulations to Aria Rana here for being able to take third place, and of course with that third place comes five million gil and quick note to all of the winners: you will be contacted about everything after after the segment is done. So make sure you're available and reachable now Lermy, let's go ahead yeah. and talk about our second place second place and it, between first and second i need to say it was a nail biter it, it literally was a nail biter Ooh. uh <laughs> second place goes to entry number two muda moon once again this absolutely beautiful piece just barely one point one point below it the literally was wow. one point difference the lighting is flawless mark. here the framing is beautiful and just the the shock that i felt seeing this the first time and having to double check that this was actually an apartment was you too? In incredible yeah i just yeah. did i had to go and check to make sure because this is a beautiful beautiful piece of work well congratulations out there to muda moon you are going to be the recipient of 10 million gil and that soft shaded warrior of light chibi artwork yes. from silver geki now Lurmy, there yes. has to be a winner there has to be a first place now, my question to you is, who are they? Well, they are uh, from our very own server, my home server, Brunhilder. And it's uh, Sefer Munoani, uh, entry number three. Congratulations. 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 Just no, no question. No, again, one point over. But this is beautiful. I think yes. the, the bit that gave this the extra point uh, from my end at the very least is that I can see myself living here. This is mm -hmm. a beautiful home 
that was made even to the theme, which is very difficult to get as a beautiful home. Light versus Dark is a very, a very epic kind of storytelling theme that it's not so easy to turn into a living space. It's no, they did very it so broad. well. Yeah, 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 they really did. But Light versus Dark is like a very broad, but also very narrow topic to hit. Mm -hmm. You can do so much, mm -hmm. but so little. With it. It's just housing. I hope this contest and people who might be inspired for housing, please don't be afraid to do housing. Housing is amazing. Please do it. I'm afraid to do housing. <laughs> <laughs> I am deathly afraid to do housing. But we are very thankful that you are brave enough to come out here and have the unenviable position of trying to figure out who does have the best housing. And that is going to go to Zephyr Munani. Thank you once again. Congratulations on getting that first place. Of course, with it, 20 million gil. And that, that half body. That is a house. That is that's a, a that's a house. That's if you are lucky enough to win win the lottery and get it, that is a house. <laughs> Never. Congratulations. Hey, Big time I'm congratulations. just saying, you know, the character name is Xanthor Ultraza. You could find me on Malboro. You know, we could share some of that 20 million. <laughs> it doesn't have to be. I did give it the answer. I'm not saying. <laughs> Wrath isn't saying anything, all right? Yeah. yeah no, Ra no. Wrath, is, Wrath is above board. He is, he's, he's not above. Wait, he is above being bribed. Sorry. Yeah, yeah, I'm very above. What am I, very what am I, above being, being bribed. <laughs> what, what, what am I saying? <laughs> anyway. and, and of course, that half body warrior of light illustration from Silver Geki. So a big congratulations once again, as well to our third place, Aria Rana here. Our second place, Muda Moon. Really amazing work to all of you out there. Thank you so much for your entries, for being brave enough to enter, and for showing off your uh, uh, unreal creativity now before we head yes. into our next segment of these this contest which could be the art contest uh, any final thoughts on this starting with you sly to all the entrants and winners i will be uh reaching out to you uh sometime in the near or far future for you to come and design my venue so please look forward to that hi um <laughs> but seriously uh like again again really really strong entries um Again, it's 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 a it's a tough job because like like you said at the beginning, like when you you see one entry and it's something done really well, and you see a, a different entry next, and it's something done extremely well. Like they're they're all good entries, and it, it was so hard to choose. Again, like mm. it, you don't want this job. <laughs> no, no, you don't. No, you don't. And wrath, you know. Let's get some. Let's get some of those final closing thoughts from yourself. Yeah, those are pretty cool. Um, I think, uh, it, uh, okay, yeah, that's. <laughs> uh, Wrath, you, uh, simple. You just like simple. reached into my brain. You pulled out all of the words from my brain. Yeah. <laughs> and Lermy, last but definitely not least, right How, after what we yeah. saw today, housing doesn't have to hide behind the other contest. It's. It's a strong mm -hmm. contest. Uh, it's always like really creative, and uh, mm -hmm. I'm always proud to see everybody's work. And I think we all definitely are very proud of it. Let's go ahead and give a big hand out there in chat, though, for Lermy, Wrath, and Sly, aka mm -hmm. Gray Fox. We really do appreciate you giving Yay. us your time today, and of course, your phenomenal skills when it comes to being the judges that you are. Thank you Fan for having us. Thank you. Thank you. I like that. Thank clap. you. The the I, I'm clap. not sure who let me in here. It was probably a mistake, but I'm glad I got to be here anyway. <laughs> and we are very Damn. glad. To, we're very glad. We're very glad to have had you. We're and, and and look forward to hopefully in LunarCon 2024 to be doing this again. When I Definitely. submit my own house. <gasps> well, there you go. We got a little. We got a little tease from that rat from rats. It's, it's going to be a few boxes. That's it. See you later. Bye. <laughs> All I'm right. hiring a contractor. <laughs> we're going. We're, we're we're going hardcore for, uh, yeah. for all of this. But now I believe we're going to go ahead and start stepping into the art contest. Lithy, I want to get a I want to get a vibe check from you though, out of uh, what's coming up from the art contest. Oh, there's some incredible artwork coming up, Sam. It's going to be amazing. But for that, 
As great as Wrath, Lurmia, and Sly are, we do have to swap around the judges here a little bit. So, guys, don't go anywhere. We'll be heading to a quick break. In just a two, three minutes, we'll get the new judges for the art contest in, and then we'll be talking about that one. So, thank you all for hanging around already for the winners of the housing contest, and see you all in just a second. All right, now that we're done with houses, which were unbelievably amazing, we're going to step foot into the art contest world. But of course, I'm not going to be doing this alone. Joining me, we have a Don, we have Timmy, and Cosmically Tiki. Now, let's go ahead and get into a little bit of the process when it came to judging these pieces of artwork. And Don, we're going to start with you. Yeah. Uh, for, for the process of judging the pieces of art, I try to be as fair as possible in the sense of like the, the quality of the art when it comes to how professional it looks or how, how proficient the person is. I did take it into account partially, but I also wanted to give a chance to the people that might not have the amount of time or of experience that wanted to participate from uh, winning. So I decided to take the most value out of the, the idea behind it, the representation of the the subject that, that we were given, the objective to represent a uh, travel or a journey. Yeah. Right, okay. Yeah, so it, it, it always very interesting to be able to peer behind the curtains a little bit and get an idea of what exactly goes on in these processes. And now on to you, Timmy, like, well, let's get an idea of how things were looking for your process when it came to judging these pieces of art. Uh, so I feel like a lot of pieces kind of came from different perspectives in terms of like the mediums that were used. So I kind of uh, tried to uh, pick based on like, oh, some mediums were like maybe 3D or sculpted or some were like 2D. So I tried to kind of apply like uh, how certain themes would fit uh, certain uh, 
way things are made. <laughs> uh, and I, I tried, uh, similarly, I tried to give everything like a thorough look and like really like analyze each piece before uh, giving my scores and all that. And, and that's never an easy process, right? Having to make sure you stay objective when it comes to those different mediums, as well as making sure to, it, it kind of, I would say adhere to what you have going on when it comes to your own judging process and what you want to put out there. Now, let's move on. Cosmically Tiki, we have all of these amazing art pieces, and now I want to get your thought process behind how you went about judging these pieces of art. Yeah, no, I could only kind of reiterate what the other two have said, because just because someone might not have as much time or the technical skill in certain senses the concept is there the workings are there like people are learning lighting effects and line work you kind of object uh judge them objectively so um and try and judge them as fairly as possible and that, and, and, that, and that's always difficult right making sure to maintain that objectiveness and maintain that fairness when it comes to actually figuring out which pieces of art you are yeah, you're like, okay, yeah, this is this is what we want to go for. This is what we think is looking is going to be the best, and this is um yeah, what what we're most excited about, especially when it comes to the amazing skill and the amazing talent of the Final Fantasy 14 art community. We just saw it in the housing. We saw that the house is there a, an expression of true creativity, and now we continue that expression of true creativity through artwork. And so, Adan, I'm going to leave it to you to start walking us through some of these pieces of art, walking us through all of these pieces of art, rather, uh, starting off with our first one. Okay. Oh, this piece is the uh, the Mikari one, the, the one that was made out of... It's really well done, actually. This is a rare skill that I don't see a lot of people doing. I don't see a lot of it, especially when it comes to fun art and representation of their, their characters, usually 2D, maybe 3D art. So seeing something of this nature uh, submitted really uh, tickled my fancy. Uh, I don't remember if it was this piece specifically that I judged, uh, but it, it's um, just really beautiful to see something like this, right? Uh, the, the Mikari with the staff, I think it's a white mage staff actually, uh, if I remember correctly. Uh, it's it's just really well done, right? I don't have a lot of skill in this area, so I can't uh, speak from experience. But just from looking at it, it, it's it's really well done. No, it it absolutely is, and I being able to transfer it into a cool medium like this. I mean, cosmically tiki. Let's get let's when you were judging this, what was going through your mind? Um. I do have a little bit of experience in crochet. I'm just not very good at it, personally. <gasps> <laughs> I do love crocheting, but I usually make like blankets and scarves, so flat things. Uh, being able to make it like what is usually kind of more deemed 2D as a medium into 3D, and that it's standing up on its own in a sense. Sure, the uh, plush is leaning against something, but the staff is holding its shape. The ears are sitting up. Nothing is like drooping over. It's a really impressive showing of technical skill in building a proper structure for this. It was a really unique way to try and take the theme of the art contest and show it off. I agree. Now, and Timmy, what are your thoughts? Oh, I really like how the staff is made. It's really cute. Uh, th there's like a lot of really creative and fun elements in here. Like I like how the glasses are made with wire. Um, I really like the rope around the staff. It's really creative and really fun. All right, and that is going to be our first entry from Mira. And now, Adon, we got our second one coming up from Don Skipper. Oh, this piece. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I When the, 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 the theme was Journey, if I remember correctly. I don't know the exact word, but it was along the lines of Journey. And this piece is really nice to see the reflection, like the creativity of, of reflecting the, the formation of the, of the people that I assume are an FC or a party or a group of friends in the game, uh, reflected with the, the Warriors of Light um, of, of the opposite, the, the other shard. I really liked seeing this. Uh, obviously, like drawing a group of people, uh, I feel like it brings a lot more to the composition side of things. 
uh, the, it's harder, right, to, to keep all these designs together and post them and then do the poses for the different characters in the reverse. Um, it's just really nice, both aesthetically and thematically, with the green trees contrasted by the by the trees of the of, um, uh, of, of the opposite shard. It escapes my mind right now. Uh, the name of the the shard, but yeah, I, I really like it. I do as well. It gives off a very fun. Uh, uh, I, I hard to, hard to put it into words. The, it's the, like familiar vibe. Like a, like you can if you play you play this MMO too. You can kind of understand like the sensation of being with your friends. It does. It kind of represents that uh, hanging out with friends with your with your group of, of, of friends and your party. Uh, it kind of reflects that, and then it connects it with the story of Shadow Ringers. It's really nice. It is indeed. And Tina, do you? Share that sentiment. Oh, oh, sorry. Did you say Tiki or Timmy? Timmy, Timmy. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> ah, no problem. Uh, yeah, uh, I was gonna say uh, it's kind of like a separate thing I wanted to add as well. There's a lot of characters in here, and each uh, character has a lot of attention to detail. And this looks like it took a really long time. So I could really see like the amount of effort and energy that was put into this, and there was like a lot of love in it. Um, I definitely sense like that feeling of Shadowbringers, I don't, I don't know, spoilers, whatever, like anything like that, but uh, I do get a sense of journey and it's like I see a lot of heartfelt emotion put into like the theming of this, so it's really, really nice. It is in that heartfelt emotion, it, 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 it's oozing from every single line out of this amazing piece of work. And now Tiki, for your thoughts on this. I mean, even when it comes to the theme journey, how the uh, armor sets at the bottom are kind of the base level 50 sets you're all striving to when you first start the game for each of your classes. And then the top in the green section, how that is kind of where you're at at level 90, showing the progression of what you're striving for, the accomplishments, and then kind of you're at Endwalker post journey type situation. You're together with your friends and how far you've come. I thought it was a really, really clever way to show Journey. And indeed it is. Now we move on to our third piece, Adon, from Sir Peter from the Tribe of the Speck, titled Captain, There's Water in the Ocean, a.k.a. my greatest piece of work. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I... A mouthful. Uh, it's, I mean, it's really nice, right? There's a lot of elements to, to this one that I really like. Like the, the backlight with, with the shadow and the, and the way the eye... It's done on this, the expression on the, on the character's face, looking back, uh, kind of almost lost uh, in, in their emotions. Uh, the, the breaking shards on the back, right? Which is, a, I think it's meant to be a callback to when you, uh, spoiler for Shadowbringers, uh, right? Uh, when you cross the shards, it's really nice and the memories reflected on them. Uh, of all the characters uh, in the story, uh, friends, that we have lost. It's just and the Asim crystal. It's just really nice. I, I like again one of the the things uh, to keep in mind when judging the piece of art was composition, and I think this one was one of the, the best ones I saw. Uh, it's just really well done. You can you can really tell what the person was trying to, the kind of journey emotion that was trying to be sent right because the, the previous one was more warm and familiar, and this one is. More of a of a nostalgic in a sense and and, and sad and right? sad on the top. And I think that was it's really cool to see reflected in this. Real quick uh, mistake on my part. The actual artist's name is DJ, and the title of the art piece is "It Was Never an Easy Journey," was it? And Adana, I think that goes with what you were saying here, and with what we are the emotions that are being evoked from this piece. Tiki, what are your thoughts? Um, there's a lot of skill with the lighting work. I really enjoyed seeing the light with the shattered glass, the reflective bits, and even like the moon clip in the Mikote's hair. Even though it's kind of shrouded in shadow, usually something like metal would catch on light a little bit more that it would shine through. And I think that's, I, I thought it was really cool. I really loved the lighting work in this. I do as well. It, it looks very good. And Timmy, we will get your thoughts. Uh, thematically, it's really, really nice. There's like really, really good elements of storytelling in here, which I think is really, really pretty. Um, you can definitely see a lot of emotion in the Mikote's face, and like you could see in her eyes, kind of like hollow, 
like she obviously had gone through a lot and I think it fits really really well with this really sad theming and energy to it. And once again, another great piece of art from DJ titled, It Was Never an Easy Journey, Was It? Moving on to our next piece, uh, Don, we have from MD Chen. Oh, this is going to be a word. Malapropism. I think I pronounced it. Yeah, uh, this was one of the few comics that were in the, in the, in the submissions. And I really just really enjoy just the generally comic format. It's just I'm a sucker for it. Uh, the, the, the kind of the, the humor on this is also really well done. Super adorable. The art style, I, I just adore it. I don't know. It speaks a lot to me because it's kind of the, the, the kind of stuff that I personally enjoy. Uh, but beyond that, it's just really well done. Comics are really hard to make. And, you know, keeping the characters uh, close enough to the designs, uh, so like to, to their design, so you can tell uh, what is going on. Uh, just really nice work all around, really enjoyable to read. Uh, it was a treat to find uh, this uh, uh, submission. Tammy, do you agree? Oh, Tammy, right? <laughs> Timmy, Timmy. Okay, Timmy, Timmy, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I want to say the third panel is really cute, <laughs> by the way. Um, <laughs> I really enjoyed looking at this one. It has, like, a lot of fun energy to it. Uh, <laughs> and it's really, really cute. Um, as was said, it's unusual for, like, a comic format uh, to be in a submission, so it was really fun to read through. And Tiki, your, your thoughts? I will say, uh, this piece made me audibly like laugh when I first started judging it, and I was in a call with friends, and everyone's like, "So, what, what were you laughing at? N nothing." <laughs> um, it was, it's, it's so much fun. Comics are really hard. I don't think I can say anything kind of new to the reiteration of like everyone has said what I would want to say. It was a fun, again, I'm broken record. It was a fun take on Journey of taking like, I'm not going to do a literal Journey. I'm going to sing Journey. <laughs> I'm going to sing Don't Stop Believing. <laughs> oh, well, we thank you greatly, MD Chen, for your amazing comic titled Malapropism. Now on to our next piece of art from Panic titled Nostalgia. And Adon, I'm, I'm feeling a little bit of nostalgia looking at it. Yeah. No, yeah, I mean, the thing is like when I saw this and I, and I read the, the title of the piece, it made a lot of sense because the the way, uh, the, the, the clothes that the character is wearing are the, um, the initial Mikote clothes. Uh, and it made me think back to when I just started the game and I got my Chocobo for the first time. And I was able to just run. I, I think I would run like an hour around Redania, just looking around things with my chocobo. It felt like an actual, like a journey, right? Like the beginning of like proper beginning of a journey, even though it was so in the middle of ARR. But like the, the that was like the, the the kind of like the the idea behind the piece, right? But like the, the the piece itself, it's really well done. Like the painting on this, I really really like. The, the blurring of both the, the, the back and the front and the chocobo at the front, uh, kind of centering on the character and, and what they and like they're gazing around themselves, you know, going with their chocobo. I think it's it's just really well done and really sends the message to me. Like it makes me think of my own journey. And I, I think that's just like it takes a lot to do that. I think it's really well done. I also love a lot the, the all the details on the feathers. Chocobo. That's hard. It does. It, it it does look really good, and it does indeed uh, evoke that feeling of nostalgia. Tiki, are you feeling that nostalgia? Yeah. Uh, my journey into fourteen was a little bit different. I did not have as much time. I kind of powered through the whole game in like three months. But uh, Ooh, I months really enjoy the like depth of field work as someone who works in like media, specifically with like cameras and stuff that. They, the chocobo is slightly out of focus, but even though it's out of focus, there's still detail in all of the feathers. There's still proper lighting and things like that. It wasn't... Th there's just a lot of skill in this. And that, yeah, mm -hmm. there's still the... You can see the individual feathers. Some of them are darker, some of them are lighter, and that the Miko is still fully in focus. She is the centerpiece of this journey. And Timmy, your thoughts? As everybody mentioned, uh, the depth of field is really, really nice in this. It's definitely caught my eye um, a lot when I was looking through the pieces because it's unusual. Um, people kind of put this kind of attention into it. So I always really love when pieces use it. 
Um, and the rendering is really, really clean and really, really well done. And I really like the use of colors. Um, you could definitely tell everything has a lot of detail and energy put into everything. So I really like this piece and it does have a nice feeling of wonder. Like you can see also in the Mikote's eyes and her face, she's very excited for this journey she's about to go on. I couldn't agree more. Big thank you to Panic with their art piece titled Nostalgia. Now on to our next by the artist Devin Lee Puff, A White Mage's Journey. And Adon, I, I, this, this one is very pleasing to my eyes. Yeah, uh, I like the detailing on this, the, the particles on it, the coloring, the, the details on the on the lilies. It's just really well done in general. It's really adorable. And indeed it is. Tiki, your thoughts? I love the colors. Everything is bright, colorful. It pops out. And then the contrast of the blue flowers and then the lily is great. It does. And yeah, the colors are activating the happy part of my brain, I think. Uh, Timmy, what do you think? Yeah, I was also going to say the colors are really nice. And also, this is really cute. I really like the stylization of this a lot. I like it. Okay, so to make sure I know the timing. <laughs> but yeah, it's really, really, really well rendered and really, really nice. Uh, I really, really like the effects as well, like the particles everywhere, and also the use of the particles and effects on the flower. I, yeah, this this one, like I said, was just made my brain happy, and especially I think just the way that the colors look it. it, it it brings a sense of calm as well, I suppose. But a big thank you to Devin Lee Puff. A White Mage's Journey. Now, for our next piece, which is by the amazing artist Kelly, titled The Final Battle in the Skies. And Adon, I really am feeling like this is going to be a final battle for someone here. Yeah. Uh, I uh, I like the, the composition of, of the drawing itself. The, you, can, you can tell the, like, it, it evocates the action very well. Uh, I, uh, this was one of the pieces that I, I wished had a little bit more uh either gear or or the, the monster itself i could tell because i cannot remember what part of the of the game this is the, like the characters were from so i had a, a little bit tougher time kind of understanding the what i don't remember i think this is heaven's word but i can't remember for certain beyond that the the shading is really well done i think that the detailing on the scales and the, and the horns of the dragon are really nice uh and i like that the swords have teeth i think that's really cool it, it is a neat little detail. Timmy, what are, you, what are your thoughts? Oh, this one's really, really dynamic and has a lot of energy to it, which I find really impressive. That's really, really hard to really put into drawings and illustration in general is putting like a lot of action and like dynamic poses and that kind of thing. The colors are really, really nice and really unified all throughout. And it has got like a really nice texture throughout as well. And Tiki, are you feeling uh, as much on the edge of your seat as I am with this piece? <laughs> yes. Um... Yeah, no, this picture tells a story, and like Temi said, the texture with the color is really unique in the sense of, I I could be wrong, I don't know if this is traditional, but it looks like colored pencil to me, or like pastels, uh, like the oil pastels, but it's just, it's so good, the texture's really nice, it helps elevate the piece quite a lot. Well, a big thank you to Kelly with the piece the final battle in the skies. Now, for our next artist, we have Valeria. The title, The Intrepid. And <laughs> I, I, Adon, this one, this one is already making me smile. Yeah. yeah, like I love, most of all, like like the piece is just generally incredibly well done, right? There's so much detail, both in the, in the foreground and the background. The characters themselves with the, with the class gears, both. I think it's gather crafter uh, and a warrior. Uh, but like the thing that I love the most about this piece are two things. First of all, the characterization. With both the characters, you can immediately tell their personalities from the both the, the way they are posed and the expression on their faces and the, the, the dynamic these two have too, right? You can kind of, even if it's not the, the canon dynamic, they already have in mind, you can kind of like make it out of this. But also the cats representing them too, like each one of them has a cat with them, which are also minions that you can get as a minion fanatico. Uh, <laughs> these are minions you can get in the game. Uh, so that just elevated this piece a lot for me. This is just so well done. I love it. It truly is. Do you agree, Timmy? 
Yes, <laughs> this is really, really nicely done. Um, I wanted to bring a point as well. There's like a lot of attention to the background that's like really, really detailed. Um, something that's really, really hard to do in an illustration is have a background uh, meld together with the characters and not have them feel too separated. So I think that works really, really well in creating this scene. Um, and the characters also look very engaged in what they're doing and all around really good storytelling and a feeling of a sense of journey and <laughs> you can tell what part of the journey that they're in. Agreed, Antiki. What are you, what are you feeling? I also just adore that this piece tells a story, like Aidan said, uh, the, the, you can see their personalities, but you can even just see the frustration of like pointing at the map being like, I know it's here, I know it's here, and kind of the laid back, kind of tired personality of the warrior just being like, sure, sure, let's keep going. <laughs> it's just, it's a very, very fun piece. I, that, I couldn't agree more. It, it absolutely is fun. And a big thank you to Valeria, their title of their art piece, The Intrepid. Now we're get, starting to get into the final four here, starting off with Lucifer's Crow, A Long Journey, Adon. Oh, yeah, this piece. I Well, there's some so many elements, right? Like, uh, spoilers just for generally for the story before I get into it. But, like, you know, the uh, it's just the, the bluebird. Uh, you know, um, me, uh, you know, uh, uh, nah, uh it's just like the, the whole piece is like, it, you can tell what they're trying to say with the journey on this one. Uh, I, I like the, it kind of reminds me a little bit of an anime opening almost. Uh, the section where, you know, all the faces are, are, are looking uh, and, and they appear on the background. It's just really well done. I love the centerpiece with the SM crystal. And I, what I assume is their bunny boy, the Viera boy, and their Asim form, which I'm a sucker for when people go like, what would my Asim look like? And they design it and it always looks great and I just love it. Uh, it yeah, it's just really well done, the particles on it too. Tiki, do you uh, agree? Yes, and I, I adore the composition of this. Your eyes are immediately drawn to the crystal in the center and then kind of circle around to catch everything in. And I think that's a really clever way because the shapes throughout the piece kind of direct your eyes in the different directions as well. Um, and the lighting is phenomenal. It, it, it really, truly is. And Timmy, I, I got to hear, what are, you, what are you feeling? I agree as well. Um, kind of like what Adan said, it kind of reminds me in a way of like an anime kind of opening or a kind of poster for an anime, which is really fun. Uh, the composition is really, really nice and I really like the colors that are used. Uh, it has a very like, uh, like very personal feel to it, which is really, really nice. And I really like the lighting effect that's coming from the crystal in the center. I 100% I agree. Thank you to Lucifer's Crow for their art piece a long journey now on to our next one by gogo -Go, titled sage travel tea bowl wood fire pottery this is actually really cool another physical piece of art adon oh yeah this pottery i think this was the only pottery piece that we saw on the right correct me if i'm wrong i don't want to be i hope not uh, but it was really interesting to see uh, pottery. I'm not very skilled, so if there is any uh, meaning behind the way it's done, because I, kn I know depending on the design of it, uh, it, it can have different meanings. It's just that I am not proficient in this art form, so I wouldn't be able to comment on that. But I think it's it's just very well done. Uh, I It could be designed after the pieces in Charlien, although I would have to go check because my memory is just really bad in but this is really well done. Uh, it looks old. It looks worn. It definitely, like, it definitely imparts journey in that sense, right? Uh, you can see like the the piece of dirt and the and the dirt inside of it. The, it. It's just it's just really nice. It looks aged. It looks like it was actually taken from ruins, right? But it's in pristine condition at the same time. I really like it. It's it's never easy to get that look when you're firing pottery and i don't know why i use those words i have no idea what i'm talking about but tiki <laughs> let's get a little let's get a little bit of sense about what what you feel is going on here yeah no i completely agree and i enjoy seeing like how much effort was put into the texture of it that there's the individual ridges which i'm sure they had to carve out themselves even if it was with a tool or anything that there's multiple shapes to it so the lip kind of flares out slightly and yet there's still the bottom where there's a little bit of a 
uh, I don't know how to put it, at, at the bottom, basically. It's not just a flat bottom, it's still sitting on something, which actually, I believe there is a engraved uh, press of the sage symbol down there, if I'm remembering correctly. So, overall, really wonderful piece. Indeed so, and I mean, Timmy, the <laughs> wonderful piece, yes or no? Yes, uh, I also agree. I really like the individual ridges that were put in. Um, I really like the, I don't know what you would call it, but there's like a like a bit of a brown, I guess, kind of texture to it. That It's like kind of around the lip of the top. Um, I feel like that's a really, really nice piece. And I also like where it's placed as well. Um, I feel like the time of day really helps complement the colors of it. And it really stands out really nicely against the nice flowers in the back and the stone as well. A big thank you to GoGo for their Sage Travel Tea Bowl, which is wood-fired pottery. But before we go any further, I do want to make a quick announcement. The PvB tournament has begun and is currently being streamed on LunarCon underscore official three, LunarCon underscore official four Twitch channels. If you are wanting to go and watch those streams, both are happening at once, I believe. So yeah, go and check that out if you're into PvP. But we are going to continue our talks about art Moving on to our second to last piece, Zintik, different forms, one journey, Adon. Oh, this is the second comic, the, the second and last comic uh, kind of that was uploaded. And it kind of, it's a good contrast with the last one because the last one was cute and humorous. Uh, and this combines also a little bit of uh, not only the, the beginning of the journey, but also the, the challenge right before the end. And it, it kind of shows uh, my, my experience, too. It's a really good reflection of, of, I think, most players' experiences, right? The beginning of the game, uh, the the ultimate confrontation, and then chilling on your island sanctuary, which I do a lot myself. So I, I just really like it. Uh, the I, I like how it starts as a cat girl, and then it's an aura, and then it's a lalafell, which is so true. <laughs> I, I, every Lalafell I know goes through this journey of fantasy into <laughs> most of them at least. It's really well done. I, I, I really, really like it. And I hope that whoever made this is really proud of the work. And I would love to see more of this. In the yeah, Timmy, what are your thoughts? Oh, I agree with Adan. I, it's a, I feel like I feel the personal journey in this. Um, how each, like, each panel, <laughs> they fantasia into a different race. Um, and I could feel each panel has like a, a personal connection to it. Like they really put like their energy to make a scene and it came out really, really nice. Like I can tell the storytelling and I, I could tell that there was like a lot of nice effort. And I, as a Don said, I would love to see more of this in the future as well. I think we all would. Tiki, would you like to see more of it and your thoughts? Yes. The true journey we're all striving for, retirement. <laughs> As our uh, goals are taking our time, just relaxing at Island Sanctuary or stressing about it, depending on how you feel. No, I, I really enjoy this, that it shows the little glimpses of just being a bright-eyed, like, start with Heidelin's Crystal and then the final battle, and everything is just done. You can take a breath, you can relax, you've done the content, you've done the story, you've saved the world. Saving the world is uh, always important, but I, I, I definitely agree that we're, I, we're all working towards uh, retirement. <laughs> but a big yeah, thank you to Zintik. That hurts a lot, too. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Different forms, one journey. <laughs> and now, last but certainly not least, we have Worst Wizard with their piece, Family Free. Adon, this. Oh, yeah. This. I, I personally knew this artist, so it was very difficult not to be biased, right? Because I actually, I don't know them personally, but I personally know who this is, who, who did this piece. Really, really well done. Uh, I love that the characters are both, you can recognize immediately who they are, but they're not, they're not warping their style to be closer to the actual models of the characters. They, they obviously gave them their own touches to them in, in the character design department. I, uh, I really like that the, both Journey and, and the title family are conveyed perfectly on this piece. You can tell the relationship of the characters, the way uh, each one has their own personality reflected onto onto this piece, the, the, the accuracy with which they reflected the gear that is in the game and rendered it onto piece. And I love the Chocobo. <laughs> and I'm just, sorry, I'm a sucker for Chocobo. So just really well done. I just love it so much. 
I, I, I love it a lot as well. Timmy, are you feeling the love for this piece? Yeah, it's really, really nicely done. Uh, I like the stylization of it a lot. I feel like <laughs> all the characters have a lot of personality that show through each of their faces, um, including the animals and creatures. <laughs> um, yeah, all around, a really, really nice use of color. I really like the green splotch in the background as well to kind of help like emphasize like, oh, this is also like, they're going through kind of like a forest or a kind of grassy area and it complements the colors really, really nicely. It does. And, and Tiki. We got to get your we got to get your feelings on this piece. God, what feelings don't I have about this piece? Um, I'll keep it short. The expressions are what like killed me in the best way. It was the pure joy on Thancred's face, the just like childlike glee on Ryan's face, the composure of Gaia, and just like the soft, like loving, content gaze of Uriange is just oh, <laughs> I love it. It's a family. <laughs> It is a family indeed, and a big, big thank you to Worst Wizard for their art piece, Family Reunion. Now, as a reminder, this is an art contest, so a contest means there has to be winners. And of course, we have a first, second, and a third place, with third place getting 5 million gil. That's a lot, but just you wait until you hear what second place gets 10 million gil. Once again, a pretty penny, but of course, first place is going to be getting that 20 million gil and is going to be getting full color chibi artwork from Sane. So judges, I mean, that is a pretty hefty prizes for all of our three winners. Oh, 100%. I, I'm kind of jealous. I, I think I should get the chibi. They can get the gil. <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, couldn't, I couldn't agree more. I, 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 I And... These, these prizes are always really cool to be able to see here and to be able to give out to them. And so I think we should go ahead and talk about our third place real quick, which if I'm reading this correctly, is going to be Dawn Skipper at Journey's End. And so, uh, uh, Dawn, let's start off with you. Get You know, we talked about it a little bit earlier, but let's, let's rehash what we felt about this piece. Yeah, it, uh, it encapsulates Journey really well. I like the, the contrast of the party in the group with the, the people from the from the shard, the, the opposite shard. Uh, it's a really well done piece with many characters, which makes it very hard to render. Uh, and as, as Tammy had said, it's, it has a lot of potential to, to detail in each and one of them. Uh, it's, uh, it's really, really well done and, and I liked it a lot and I'm glad to see it here. I think it's very well deserved indeed. Yeah, Timmy, and your thoughts on our third place? Yeah, I agree as well. Uh, each of the characters, there's so many of them, and each of them has like a lot of attention to detail. Like every character has like a lot of effort and their own story to tell, and every everything all around. It's like a really nice sense of journey and progression with the reflection on both the top and the bottom. Yeah, and Tiki. I just wanted to say congratulations because I can't add anything to the conversation that hasn't already been <laughs> said. <laughs> Well, there you have it. All right. A big thank you and a big congratulations to Don Skipper for their piece at Journey's Inn. Congratulations on third place. Now, our second place is going to be Valyria the Intrepid. And Adon, I think, yeah, we, we felt a lot of love for this piece. Yeah, yeah. This is my personally beyond talking bias here. This was my favorite piece. Uh, but to, talking about the, the objectively was really well realized. You can feel the journey. You can feel the relationship between these two characters, uh, the, their personalities and the dispositions, um, the situation they're in. It's a piece that puts you in a moment in time and it manages to reflect that really well and make you feel immersed. Yeah. And, and Tiki, I mean, uh, the, the immersion aspect for it is really there for me. I yes. don't know about you. No, absolutely. Um, it was, it, it's just a delightful piece. I love that they are on a literal journey and that it tells another story aside from that. The personalities, everything is just, oh, beautiful. And Tibby? Yeah, I agree as well. Um, as I said before, attention to the background and the characters, there's a lot of attention to detail on both <laughs> and being able to blend both the background and the characters to really tell a scene and story is really impressive. Um, the characters are really, really well done, and I like their story that they're telling. And what a story it is, especially for Valeria, our second place winner, who is going to be getting that 10 million gil for their art piece titled The Intrepid. Now, 
Let's get the drum roll going on here, of course, for our first place winner, which is going to be getting the 20 million gil, the full color chibi artwork from Sane. And that is none other than the artist Worst Wizard with their piece titled Family Reunion. And Adon, I think based on what we said during when we were talking about it, it, it this is definitely what I felt like we were all leaning towards. Yeah, it's it's the reason why this piece won. Uh, it's not just the technical capability, uh, the technical abilities of the person that made it, but it's also like it combines a lot of the aspects that made other pieces very appealing to me. Uh, the, the 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 reflection of the theme that they were given, the reflection of the characters' personalities and their personal relationships. Uh, as Tammy had mentioned, that even the animals have personalities in the the, the very well detailed personalities in the in the in the piece itself. Uh, it, it's just uh, uh, not only really well done, but all the, the elements of it are really well done and proud. Uh, it's a, just a greatly realized piece. Sorry, I am I'm parched. <laughs> no worries, no worries. Timmy, uh, I think we can help out down here with, with your thoughts. Yeah, I agree. The technical aspect is also really, really nice. But besides that, like... There's a really nice attention to detail all around. Uh, the characters' expressions are really, really nice. Um, it's it's a scene. It's a story told a story told through a scene. They're going on an adventure. They're going forward. Yeah. And Tiki. Yeah. No, I can only. <laughs> Nori's sucks being the last one because I can only read. I know. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> but at, I'll add a compliment for some weird reason. Weird reason the Western world likes to say as a compliment. I want to eat your art. I don't know. That art piece kind of evokes it. It's just I want to eat your art. It just looks so good. <laughs> you wow, that is you just awakened something in my brain. It's like, yeah, now I want to eat this. So thank you. Thank you, Tiki. I'm also strangely hungry now, but a big congratulations to Worst Wizard on their piece. Family reunion and of course being our first place in the Lunar Cod 2023 art contest. And congratulations to Don Skipper at Journey's Inn for third place and to Valeria the Intrepid for second place. Now, before we close out here on the art contest segment of this panel, Adon, any final thoughts? Uh, it was really nice to see the creativity and the, the artistry of the community. It's always been there. I'm a, I'm a really, I'm a Twitter enjoyer of, of the fan art side of the community. So being able to judge this piece with, with people like this too, uh, it's really nice to, to be part of this, and thank you so much for having me. Uh, and thank you so much for the people that participated. I hope that in the next year, if LunarCon comes around, you'll be back here to give it another go. And I, I, I ask all the people that participated to keep going in the artistic journey. All of you are amazing and did a really great work. And thank you very much for participating. And thank you for being a judge, and thank you for all of the hard work that you put forward. Timmy? Any final thoughts? No, thank you so much for having me. It was really nice to see all the pieces and all the effort that everybody put into each of their pieces. And there was like a lot of variety and fun to look at. Oh, I'm really jealous. I want uh, an art from Saint. <laughs> <laughs> Congratulations yeah, looking, to all the winners. <laughs> yeah, after, after looking on it at, at that, I, I couldn't agree more with you, Timmy. Uh, and a big thank you for all of the work that you did with your judging. Now, Tiki, last but certainly not least, any final thoughts for us? I wish we could have had everybody win. <laughs> I know right. that's like a cop out to say that, but at the same time, everyone had such skill. Um, it was really hard to judge uh, a lot. Obviously, we can't show our judging sheets, but a lot of mine had very similar numbers, like off by a couple, like a digit or two. Oh, yeah. Just sitting here, like, uh, this is good. Oh, I like this one. Uh, I gotta pick a winner. <laughs> it was really hard. <laughs> Yes. And that is why I have to reiterate, I'm very happy that I do not have to have that kind of pressure on me when it comes to judging. But a big thank you to you as well, Tiki. And one more big shout out to Adon, Timmy, and Tiki for all of the hard work. Chat, let's get some claps in here for them. That is going to conclude the art segment of this panel, but we still do have the cosplay contest to go through. We're going to go ahead for a short break to get that set up. So don't go anywhere. You do not want to miss that.
Hello everyone, it is good to be back again. We just got done with the art contest and of course starting us off was the housing contest. But what better way to end out this panel than with the cosplay contest here for Lunarcon 2023. My name is Sam Talks. I'm going to continue to be your host throughout this panel. But now we have a new suite of judges to be joining over as well as the organizer for this entire event, Melinda Chen. So Melinda, a big thank you for all of your hard work. Yeah. It's always a fun thing to do. It's sometimes a little stressful, but I usually enjoy seeing all the entries. And <laughs> everyone does such an amazing job. And I can't like not do it. <laughs> and, and we thank you for doing it. And we thank you for taking the time to go around and organize this up. And especially a big thank you to our judges that we have on here for having to make the difficult choices and the difficult decisions that go along with the job. Those are, of course, going to be Jahara Jade, Akagi Ak. <laughs> Aka, Kyoga, and Crystal. So we'll start off with you, Jahara Jade. How was the, let's let's get a little bit of uh, insight into the judging process. Oh, it was so difficult. Oh my goodness. <laughs> I, really hard. <laughs> I was telling the judges, I'm like, I'm losing sleep over trying over, over our decisions. Like everyone did such a good job. It was, it was an honor to look through all of the pictures. It's so fun. Yeah, I, I, see, that's what I was saying. Once again, I'm glad that I'm not on the judging panel, I'd be crying. <laughs> <the entire time. laughs> Aka Kyoka, though, what, what do you, what were you, what was your thought process going throughout the judging? Um, so first of all, I, I love getting to judge costume contests because I genuinely love getting to see all of the hard work that cosplayers put into all of their costumes. And so just kind of like how everyone said, this was truly, truly difficult for us. And honestly, everyone looked fantastic. Everyone looked great. And I can't wait to let you guys see what we had to look at. Cause oh my gosh. What a lineup we had. I, I mean, Crystal, can you echo the, that sentiment? Hell yeah, I can echo that. <laughs> like, oh my God, we had so many. Okay, no, uh, no everyone was <laughs> It's similar to last year. The entries are incredible to look at. And I just love looking at like the different way that people craft cosplays every year. It blows my mind. Um, and this year definitely was no exception. Uh, just absolutely. It was Really, I would consider this year harder than last year to judge by far, at least in my opinion. So definitely everyone stepped up their game. Well, if your mind is being blown, I can only imagine what it's going to be like for us peons. So I think we should go ahead and start off with the first piece, uh, our first entry, rather, sorry, in coffee. So Melinda Chan, I'll let you take this. Oh, yeah. So first of all, her sewing is immaculate. Like every piece is super clean, even though like, I mean, the, the thing is, is there's no such thing as a simple 14 costume because even a simple design will have so many intricate like patterning and seam lines and details involved. And I just felt like this, this one was executed just perfectly. There's just, there's immaculate, you know, finishing and everything. That it is. Uh, I, I couldn't agree more. Jahar Jade. Same, same. I was really blown away by the bright. I mean, really, when you look at how much work went into the sewing and the trim and the bright colors and, and the corset and the hat, all being of the same color, you can tell it was all handmade, all done really well. And you know that hand sewing had to go into putting all of that trim on. I was like, boom, bam. I love it. <laughs> boom, bam. Jahar Jade loves it. What about yourself? Aka Kyoga. Oh. Of course I love it. Like, first of all, you can tell immediately that this is a red mage. And being able to kind of translate 14 designs just into real life, you really do have to just get really creative on how you, like, use techniques, use these skills. And they absolutely, like, did them flawlessly. And Crystal, your thoughts? The picture doesn't do full justice of the detailing with this. Absolutely. Like, it, seeing the progress pictures for this was a delight. <laughs> Oh, if only we could take a look into that, in, into that peek behind the curtain. Uh, but a big thank you to Al and Coffee on their level 90 Red Mage Artifact Gear cosplay. Now, on to our second one. And I'm, I'm going to let everybody know if I butcher your names or if I butcher pronunciations, please forgive me. I'm a baby in Final Fantasy. So we have Iliane with their cosplay, Nael Van Darnis, Melinda Chen. So this was a really complex armor build. There's a there's a lot of like the none of this is like 3D printed. The prop, the armor, everything is foam, and there's a lot of like intricate patterning that would be very difficult to do with just like any you know you can't just use an online pattern for this. You kind of have to just construct it yourself. There's a lot of patterning process that went into it, and the result was amazing. 
It, it, uh, amazing, I think, is the correct word. Uh, uh, Akakioka, do you agree? Oh, I absolutely agree. Armor making is actually one of my favorite things to do in cosplay. And so to see the amount of just detail work in this that they have to do by hand is insane. Like, again, these are costumes that I wish we can like show you the work in progress and get like super close and detail up into everything that you can see, but it fits really well. The weapon is huge. Like I'm sure that thing's like seven plus feet tall, like doing Final Fantasy weapons, especially from 14, they did a phenomenal job making that from like in game to in real life. <laughs> Absolutely, and in intimidating to say the least, especially on my end, uh, Jahar Jade, um, a lot of the same sentiments, but on the opposite from Aka, I'm more of someone who will do, who will craft using 3D printing. So whenever I see a foam build like this made entirely by hand with all of the detail, I'm just absolutely blown away. Like, I don't even know where to start. Um, I also really just admired that a lot of times the armor in 14 can, is just massively unrealistically huge in terms of scale but they translated the scale of this armor onto themselves in a way that makes it look very realistic while still being very in keeping and honoring to the game it just it looks fantastic i love it and once again a big thank you to ilion for their cosplay and nael von darnis now on to our third one of the day sorihu tali their welkin belkin astrologian set and i mean aka this is <laughs> really impressive to me I know, like, first of all, I actually have cosplayed the exact same Welkin set um, because I also main Astro. So when I saw this up in the lineup, I was like, oh my God, baby, it me, I love you. And so I'm already biased because I know how hard and complicated it is to make a ball gown. And so just to see the action of them like twirling, like you can see like just how like detailed and immaculate and amazing that this costume flows. And they made that prop completely from scratch. So just like how Jahara said, when they 3D print armor, I 3D print props. And so the fact that they made the whole like star globe from scratch and it spins, it blew my mind. Blew I, my I mind. mean, Jah yeah, Jahara is your mind as blown as Akka's. <laughs> It really is. It's amazing that people can look at raw materials. Um, and I just also love the details and like the, they, they noted that there was twinkling under the skirt. So there's actual like sound and when they're moving in the costume, which is just such a nice touch. And another reason why we're just like, I wish we could show you or y'all could hear, we could see these pieces in person because they really just wowed us. Yeah, Melinda, I'm, I mean, I'm sure you're wowed as well. Oh yeah. Well, that's like, you know, like I said that the, um, it's, it's an ambitious design, like to know like what went into it it's there's there's a lot of mixed media happening there's fabric work there's you know like sculpting and little like accessory pieces but like i was especially impressed with how thoughtful they were with their material choices and the different kind of things that they did to bring it together and bringing it together they did indeed sorio tali the welkin astrologian set a big thank you for your cosplay now on to our next one sparkling parfait once again making me a little hungry my crafter of light and uh, i mean i'm 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 already jaw dropped here with what we have jahar jade I thought this outfit was so cute. It's just, it's so adorable. It really has that Lolita sort of silhouette. And I love the different colors in terms, or the different patterns on the tights, which go into the trim. I was just a really big fan. And the, the way, speaking of a really big fan, I love the really big fan. I, love the <laughs> with it. I really just loved the silhouette of it. It was just, it made me feel like I should sit down with them and have tea. I mean, Melinda, would are you going to enjoy some tea? Oh, yeah, I was going to say, I was just enjoying some tea right now before I spilled it on my keyboard. <laughs> oh, um, <yeah. laughs> it's fine. Uh, no, this was, this was really cute. What I like about this one especially is that it's their own Warrior of Light, like, custom glam. Like, they took, like, you know, one of the Valentine sets and they custom dyed it in-game. And then they, they made a costume to match that exact, that exact like, dye colors and things. And they have, um, they, they put a lot to, into the details. They have, like, this really cute bag. That was my favorite part, I'd say. Uh, Aka, what, what any any favorite parts of yours? Honestly, I really just love that, yeah, that they used their own Warrior of Light. And I feel like when it comes to 14, there's so much creativity that you can do with glams, especially. So to see them kind of pull this all together and have it be so cohesive to, yes, this is from Final Fantasy 14 is amazing. They did a really good job. And a really good job for sure. A big thank you to Sparkling Parfait. My crafter of light. Now on to our next one. Eza, an A, 
Itty Bitty Samurai. Their cosplay, Warrior Loyal Housemaid, Kote, and Melinda. It, 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 it's definitely evoking that <laughs> Warrior Housemaid. Yes, for sure. They have a really cute, they got like the Mog, uh, the Mog uh, with Axe. I don't know what the proper name is, but it was, um, there's the thing about this one was, like I said before, with like, there's no simple design in 14. They did all of the pattern drafting themselves. If you look up close at their progress, everything is very clean. The sewing is very clean. And then they also 3D modeled their own little tiny like accessory bits that are on the dress. Um, so it was just, it was, it was a very like, even though like at a glance you may be like, oh, this, it's just a made outfit. It's not just a made outfit. It is, it is just like the one in the game and it is very cute. And I really liked it a lot. Haka, how are you feeling? It's cute, but it's deadly. You Ooh. know, like that, first of all, that ax is awesome. Like I can tell like, is, yeah, it is like the King Mog. Like, yeah, I don't really remember the, uh, the name of the specific ax either. Yay, look at us 14 people. <laughs> <laughs> but but again, like I love when people get to use their own warrior of lights and like just you can see how it translates so awesomely to real life where like they're like, yes, this is my Makote, but I'm also going to take my warrior and actually have it be like in a housemaid outfit. And I thought it was really cute. I would also have tea with this person, but then I would go PvP with them afterwards. Oh, all right. Uh, tea, tea into PvP. Jahara Jade, what are your what are your thoughts? The part that really stood out to me is, again, the cleanness of of the sewing that was done here. Like, all of the pleats on the apron and all of the pleats on the skirt were hand done. And that was something that I really admired because I, I, I like to sew, but I will avoid any sort of hand sewing if my, as if my life depended on it. So I love watching other people do it. The, th the 3D printing that was done for the outfit as well and for the, um, the act was really nice because I feel like a lot of people think that it maybe it comes out as one big axe, but it really doesn't. So there was a lot of puzzling and painting and, and gluing and work that had to go into making a weapon that large as well. Well, we do want to say a big thank you to Itty Bitty Samurai for all of their hard work for their cosplay, Warrior Loyal Housemaid Kote. Now on to our next cosplayer, Nipa, for Sir Amrick. And Melinda, I'm going to make a small, I'm going to admit something here. I have a big crush on Sir Amrick, and this <laughs> is evoking <laughs> evoking that crush <laughs> I was say, who doesn't have a crush on sir emmerich listen um i really liked well first of all i i also am a big fan of sir emmerich but um it's it's also a very complex intimidating design like any person i've known who's attempted this character is like there's so much going into the the textures and details of the coat like there's like this weird like scale like kind of thing happening on the lining of the coat there's armor there's sewing there's just about everything involved uh nipa also did a great job with like the wig work there's just there's so many elements and he executed them very well execution yeah i i 100 agree with you on that melinda and jahara uh, execution yay or nay Oh, all of the yays, of course. <laughs> One thing that really stands out for me with this outfit, and I think with anyone in first meeting Sarah Americk, is that this the outfit, the blue and the gold and, and the black is just very fantastical. It's just very royal and amazing. And I feel like Nipa did an absolutely stunning job bringing that feeling when you first meet Americk to life and the way that I named him Bay Merrick because he's a bay, right? Um, the wig <laughs> the wig work and, and the gold work and the blue and then also just the medium of how he, t he chose to um, do the photography here all really came together and I'm a huge fan. Yeah, Aka, did it come together for you? Oh yeah, like literally as soon as I saw this picture, like I heard Ishgar's theme playing in the background. Like that's how just like brought to life Emmerich is in this photo. Like when I say, again, I'm really big into armor, Emmerich's armor makes no sense to me. You look at him in a game and you're just like, how in the heck do you even get into this on a daily basis? And Nifa pulled it off. So you know what? The fact that he did it and he achieved it and he looks fantastic, 10 out of 10 would recommend. Well, that, there you go. Put that, you can slap that on the back of the box, 10 out of 10. Nifa, Sir Emmerich, thank you so much for your cosplay. Now, Izzeli. And I think everyone's favorite, but definitely one of my favorite characters in FF14, Xenos Ye Galvis. Melinda? Sorry, I was muted. 
Um, so first of all, Xenos is another one of those really complex NPC builds, but also um, what I really liked about this build specifically was like the texture of the armor. Um, if you look at references of this design for Xenos, they nailed that, like the textures that are under the purple sections. And there's also a lot of like this applique work and they nailed all the details on those. It, overall, just a lot of, of attention to detail and a lot of different mediums being used here. And, and and those mediums, I think, really come together, Jahara. I agree. I absolutely loved it. What I thought was interesting about this in, in particular, which wasn't immediately obvious to me, was that they were worried about paint cracking on the outfit. So they chose to actually cover all of their armor in fabric, which was a really cool decision. And I think it came out really, really nice. And it created a sheen on the armor that you wouldn't have been able to get necessarily with metallic paint. Mm, Aka, do you agree? I agree. First of all, yeah, the, the colors from FF14 to in real life are already hard enough because you can't get those dyes just anywhere. So the fact that they were able to find the perfect purple for the breastplate, insane. But I also want to steal their coat because it looks very comfy and very luxurious. Well, Izzy, make sure you hold on to your coat because we have Aka coming after you for it. Thank you for your cosplay of Xenos. Yay, Galvis. Now on to Peach. On their cosplay, Zero Flashback Paladin and Jahara. I mean, wow. It just looks so lovely. I really love the whole medium. It came together. I'm really a big fan of the leather work or the faux leather work that was done on this. Um, I think it really just looks fantastic. And I, I just wish that we could show y'all some of these pictures, some of these outfits up close because the details that were put into this, absolutely just I keep saying fantastic, but that's just how I feel. <laughs> It's just chef's kiss, right, Aka? Oh, yeah. Literally, I could give a chef's kiss to everybody because they did phenomenal. But for this specifically, like, I'm pretty sure they, like, they just, like, they custom dyed their wig. They put in all of this extra effort for, like, a flashback of a character that we barely see them in this outfit. And they said, yes, that's the design that I wanted to do. And they pulled it off flawlessly. Flawless is definitely what I'm feeling, Melinda. Oh, sorry. Um, what I really also like is that it's like something kind of unique. Like it's not, it's not something like most people do zeros, like main outfit that we see all the time. And this is like a kind of just really cool to see a specific one rather than the main one. Big thank you to Peach on their cosplay zero. Once again, really amazing works here so far, especially as we go into Kirby Io Rashi with their own Warrior of Light from Final Fantasy XIV. And it's always cool to be able to see someone's own work, Jahara. Well, obviously I love this because this is an Aura and Aura Supremacy. Uh, I am not sorry, but there's so much detail work on this, um, going from the custom dip dye that's on some of the side paneling, as well as the dip dye that you would see on the back. And then the weapon itself is also massive. There's just so much custom dye work on top of all of this custom small little foam detail pieces. It really came together and it's just a really like cohesive and amazing piece. I love it. I, I love it. I love it as well. Big thank you to Kirby. Ayo Rashi for their Warrior of Light from their own Warrior of Light from Final Fantasy XIV. And so now we move on to Rin Lin. Guess what? Another Xenos Yay Galvis, which I mean, Aka, big smile on my face. I am intimidated by them walking down oh. this hallway. Let me tell you what. <laughs> but like the, the, the coat, the coat looks so clean. Again, one of these ones where we wish that we could show you guys all of the like work that they put into making this. The coat is fantastic. Wig work, amazing. Like the armor piece under the coat. They did such a fit, like phenomenal job on this. I Xenos is one of those characters that I'm like, mm, I don't know. But every time I see it as Xenos cosplayer, I'm like, okay, I see it. I see the vision. <laughs> I see the vision and the vision is intimidating the heck out of me, which I think for Xenos is Perfect. A big thank you to Roar and Lynn on their cosplay of Xenos Yay Galvis. Now, move on to Katra Yvarian on their cosplay of the Weathered Dancers Kasuke. I, I think I butchered that, but Crystal, it looks amazing. <gasps> Oh my gosh, yeah, I've made two dancer cosplays myself. I understand the struggle of how difficult this is, and holy crap, they did so good on the detail work. Uh, there is so much jewelry in the dancer cosplay, and they work it so well. Like, big props to them. Also, Vieira Supremacy. 
<laughs> they did so great. They wow. did. They did indeed do very, very well here. So a big thank you to Patra Wyvarian on their Weather Dancers at Kasuke. Yeah, really amazing work, and I do agree, Viera Supremacy. Leaf Stranger, our next cosplayer, Amelians Leveilleur, Aka. It's mom. Oh my goodness. This <laughs> oh, costume so is so good. Literally, I feel so at home. I'm like, I want her to give me a hug. That's what I've like what I feel like when I see this. Like the amount of embroidery detail, you can't see it in this photo. But yeah. if you could ever see this up close, the amount of detail that is in this costume is insanity. They hand embroidered every single piece on this costume. I do not have the patience for that. And every single thing turned out so well. It's amazing. Bless mom. Amazing is definitely the correct word for this. And yes, bless mom. So thank you to Leaf Stranger, the cosplay of Amelian's Leveor. Up next, we have DIY Ferret of their cosplay with Suki Yomi. And I would have to say, I mean, Melinda, this is wow. Yeah, so Tsukiyomi is always like a really intimidating like build to attempt and it's always amazing to see what kind of decisions everyone makes like in terms of the like the fabric choices and the the detail work involved. But you know what was really fun about this one is that she has an actual vape in the pipe. Whoa. Um <laughs> it, was, yeah. it was really cool. Really thoughtful about how to bring this character to life and I love that. Oh, I love that as well. That's 10 out of 10 creativity and working around their cosplay. So <laughs> big, really living up to the name DIY Barrett of their cosplay. Suki Yummy, thank you so much for that. On to our next, we have Jahar J. Katz on their cosplay of Heidelin. I absolutely wow. loved this one. It just, it just is so ethereal and I love the use uh, so they chose to use a bodysuit and they use an iron-on fabric over the bodysuit and it's hard to see in this picture but they have a corset on top of the bodysuit as well and it's just very iridescent, very shiny, very hard to work with as I have personal experience. Mm -hmm. uh, iron-on and they're ironing on to um, a, um, a very inelastic material as well which is going to give them a lot of challenges but I think they were able to do it very well. It's very cohesive with the wings that are on their back and the wings that are on their head and I like how they interpreted Heidelin as she appears to us in her truest form and it really invoked that fight for me where I was just like please I don't want to fight you. <laughs> you're, you're, you're a goddess please. <laughs> I, I couldn't agree. I, it, goddess definitely for sure and that is what cats is evoking here so thank you for your cosplay of heidelin now on to our next cosplayer continuing with the theme of the leve your family we have purplish crystal as alice leve your oh, alice i love her so much i loved the progress photos i wish we could show the progress photos uh for each entry but like particularly alize's the coat it has so much layering in it in particular like it looks so simple but it is so hard to achieve the like all of the different scales are i think they said that they put foam in between the fabric just to give it more depth uh and like a like add on to the jacket just amazing extra little detail work into this alley say that like you wouldn't get just by a quick glance like a photo looking at a photo like this so I very much appreciate the behind the scenes work on this cosplay. And we also do appreciate the hard work that it took to make a cosplay that looks this good. Now we move on to Aelin with their cosplay of Memphilia Aka. First of all, I, I'm still speechless. Like I am still speechless <laughs> over this costume. Like Memphilia is one of those characters that you rarely ever get to see cosplayed because of how much just insane detail work that's in her outfit. For a character that we barely see after, you know, like the first expansion, to see it done so incredibly well, she looks like she just popped out of the game. Like, I truly have no words to describe just the amount of immaculacy that this costume has. And again, one of those ones that I wish that you guys could see like every single piece that they like had to cold cast all these pieces. They made everything from scratch. They patterned it over and over and over again to make sure that it fit the way they wanted it to. Just chef's kiss, Michelin star chef's kiss. 
<laughs> Michelin star chef's kiss is like you said, it looks like she stepped out of the game. So Aelin, the cosplay of Memphilia, we can only say, please pray, return to Final Fantasy XIV. Oh. <laughs> I had to fit it in there. <laughs> no, why? <laughs> we have Raikai, Raikaiko of their cosplay of Medion and Melinda. Whoa, this is... A, a, not an easy cosplay oh, to do, but what no, the, the, yeah, like it's just she's like newer to cosplay too, and she mm -hmm. chose such an ambitious design. She was very particular about every detail, and she's just so sweet and adorable. We were all in love, you know. Look at that smile. Yeah, she's so precious. I want to hug her. <laughs> <laughs> she's so I, cute. I, yeah, this this you you feel the happiness and the joy, especially when she's right? taking this photo and just. Once again, the amount of work that went into it, uh, especially when you talk about the um, the sculpting, right? Because the, the the feet themselves are, she couldn't have been easy. No, like, yeah, there's a lot of stuff happening in this build, and I feel sorry for anyone who tries to attempt it, because it's just, it's a lot. And she did an amazing job. I could not agree more. So a big thank you to Raikako of their cosplay medium for your submission. Now we move on to Ainsel, their cosplay co- Rob, 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 da. They, a Orzia Academia version, Jahara. I thought this outfit oh. was so cute. It really, especially the fact that I actually hadn't seen an Aorzi Academia version uh, of any characters up to this point in terms of cosplay. I hadn't even really considered it, but I was like, you know what? Like, it really invokes, like, the combination of our more complex Final Fantasy outfits with the classic silhouette of the schoolgirl outfit, right? We have the skirt and and the blazer and the tie. And I love that they added the, spe the, the specific to yours the Academia patch. And then they did the ears and everything is just it's so cute. And you can feel that they're just really feeling themselves in this picture too, because I'm feeling it. I, I couldn't agree more. So big thank you to Ainzel. We are gonna move on to Westward Night with our cosplay Frey. And Crystal, this is something I'm feeling like I'm ready to go into the fray with. I love Frey so much, and this cosplay is literally amazing. The armor work is so clean. Everything just comes together into, like, a beautiful piece of art. Like, there is a lot, a lot, a lot of different techniques used in uh, this cosplay in particular. And we had long chats about this one. <laughs> Like, seriously, uh, it's a really, really clean looking fray. Like, I very much admire the work that went into this one in particular. Oh, uh, yeah. Oh, I, I, yeah, that, that, that's about right. That uh, I couldn't agree more. So a big thank you to Westward Nine for their cosplay. Now we go on to Kirin cosplay with their own Warrior of Light Monk Glam. Aka, what a th this. There's a lot going on here. Which I'm not saying yeah, is a bad you, thing. <laughs> no, literally, like, your stun is exactly what we were like when we were looking at this costume. Like, there's the, the amount of just detail, the amount of layers that went into this. They have, like, a bodysuit under there because their Warrior of Light, like, has, like, that kind of grayish-looking skin tone. So they kept that in mind, too. Super smart, by the way, to not, like, body paint yourself, but to use, like, a bodysuit to kind of imitate that kind of skin color. But then also, on top of the fact that, like, they did like leather work they did a bunch of texture in their armor like it looked like it's been beaten and battered and i am a sucker for weathering when it comes to armor work so i've been gushing over this for a long time and so they did a phenomenal job makes me want to actually play monk i've never tried it but this actually makes me want to give it a shot i think that's the best praise that you can give for a cosplay so congratulations kieran cosplay on making aka want to play a monk and a big thank you for your submission now we move on to our final submission of this complex cosplay contest and that is coming from fior reeve and it's one of my favorite characters again fan cred waters melinda they did them justice Yes, this is Thancred. Um, <laughs> first of all, like another example of someone who just like stepped out of the game. It is immaculate in all the detail work. Like there's that coat has a lot of seams and like weird, weird angles and things happening with the seams that is very difficult to do. And also on top of that, it's a it's another multimedia build where you've got sewing and armor work and everything is executed so cleanly the the armor like the top torso armor they made themselves and it's like a built like almost like a corset like it laces up in the back and it was really cool um we were blown away for sure 
Well, I know for sure that I am blown away. So a big thank you to Fjord Reeve for your submission. And that is going to conclude all of our submissions. Now, once again, of course, this is a contest. And so contests are going to have their winners. So we once again have a first, a second, and a third place. With third place getting 5 million gil, plus an Ishgard <laughs> patch or cat accessory from Turtle Smithy. Second place is going to get 10 million gil, plus a choice of rabbit or cat accessory from Turtle Smithy once more. And finally, for our first place, well, guess what? They're going to get 20 million gil, plus a choice of dragon, rabbit, or cat accessory from Turtle Smithy, and a painted bust or full body color artwork from Pillow, Pillow Boat. So, wow. These prizes, Melinda. Wow. Yeah, yeah thanks Melinda so much for everyone Melinda. who contributed. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, it helped too, but, you know, there was a lot of people involved with, the, you know, the donations of Gil. And, of course, thank you for the, the custom art um, uh, prize as well from, was it Pillow Boat? Pillow Boat. Pillow Boat, yes. yeah. Yes. Okay. yes, thank you so much for contrib those contributions. Um, I All guess right. for, first we we're going to start with the judge's choice. And this is basically mm -hmm. us being like, this is my, this was my personal favorite kind of things. So each judge has a judge's choice. And then we're going to announce third, second, and then first. So I, I'll go ahead and start with my judge's choice. I picked uh, Kirby, Kirby's Warrior of Light. It was entry nine. If you have the, uh, if you have the, if you want to bring that one back. Okay. Um, but this one, I just loved there, there was a very complete build that had a, even like, you know, a sword prop that was collapsible for travel. They're very thoughtful in making sure that this would survive Vegas. Uh, but it's also just a very mm -hmm. complex design with a lot of mixed media happening. And I, I just, I'm, I'm also just, I, I love Aura, so I'm, I'm biased there, but you know, I just, I just love their execution. It was it was very difficult to narrow down the top three. And this was like, there's a lot of entries that were tied within with like only a point or two from each other. And like, this was definitely in my tops. All right. And we have uh, for Jahara, which was Nipa, their Sir Emmerich cosplay. Yes, I chose Nipa because again, Sir Emmerich means a lot to me. And I was just really blown away by the entire presentation of uh, this cosplay and the picture in and of itself. The blue and the gold with the gold background and the red stairs. And then in the progress pictures, this is a costume that I myself would look at and go, I literally, my brain would explode before I could even figure out where to begin with it. Um, and it still felt that way even looking at all of the progress pictures because I'm just like, I don't know how you were able to break this down into small pieces and start, let alone put it together. And it, it, it brought out details in the costume that I didn't even know based on having seen him in the game because I wasn't looking that closely. So I, I just love this cosplay. I'm a huge fan mm -hmm. of it and I hope to see it in person one day. You and me both, Jahara. Yeah, oh, <laughs> so now we're gonna go on to Crystal with <gasps> their judge's choice, which was Kieran Cosplay's Warrior of Light Monk. Yes, I love this cosplay so much. Ah, it's just the whenever I saw the picture, I was like, yeah, this is awesome. And then I read the document of their write up of it. And I just like kind of fell in love with how much work and like different kinds of work went into this cosplay. So this is my judge's choice. Uh, just in particular, the leg armor really blew my mind because uh, I'm very familiar with armor making and they said that this was their first time doing it. And it is not only super clean, but it is really hard to do a clean weathered paint job. Uh, Cause like when you weather armor, it's, 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 it's very difficult to do it a clean way. So I really admire like the textures and the weather that they put the paint, like the paint job is incredible for their armor build as well as like cleanly put together. Um, but yeah, I just, I really wanted to give a shout out to it for being a first time and honestly doing a great job. Yeah, for first time, it's mind blowing, especially when you look at some of the other uh, entries that we had in here. So we go over to Akka's judge's choice, which was Lilian's from Leaf Stranger. Mom, okay. <laughs> So because I am a sucker for costumes that look simple, but are not, and that are filled to the brim with a bunch of just hand done details, I fell in love 
just knowing how hard and how dedicated you have to be to hand embroider things and have it actually translate really, really well is a skill and patience, especially patience, that I currently do not have that I hope to have one day. Um, and also the fact that, again, you just feel like you're getting a nice warm hug from this photo because of just how she is able to just be Amelians. And so the whole thing just came together. It is absolutely stunning. It may look simple, but hey, Final Fantasy XIV, we've already learned nothing's ever that simple, even if it looks that way. So this is my judge's choice. Congratulations, mom. Congratulations, Ooh. mom, indeed. But of course, now that we have the judge's choices, done we are going to go ahead and take a look at our winners so starting off with third place we have Ilian on their cosplay of nael von darnis so congratulations to Ilian of one of well, in my opinion a really good cosplay and melinda i i think you could agree with that oh yeah no i was this was immaculate <laughs> i had not everything was yeah. amazing the sculpture all the sculpted details were amazing it's all by hand it just blew us out of the water yeah, blowing fantastic the, job. Fantastic job indeed. Blowing us out of the water is the correct and accurate statement. So a big congratulations to Ilian. You are going to be, of course, getting that 5 million gill and the Ishgard patch or cat accessory from Turtle Smithy. And so now we go on to second place, Bureev, with their cosplay of Than Cred Waters. And uh, yeah, this is Woo! this is Than Cred at its finest, Crystal. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Wait, who was going to say something? Uh <laughs> Go ahead, Akka. Go ahead. Take it away. No, 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 no. This is all you, girl. All you. Oh, it is? But anyway, yeah. Thancred, uh, this is Thancred, everybody. Woo! No, but <laughs> seriously, the armor, the armor work is very, very clean. The jacket, everything. Like, this whole cosplay came together so perfectly. Well, well done. Great job, Thancred. I'm glad that this is Thancred. I, I'm, I'm glad it is as well. And um, so, of course, that second place means they do get that 10 million gill with the choice of rabbit or cat accessory from Turtle Smithy. And now the drum roll for our first place winner of the cosplay contest for Lunar 2023. And I think we all have an idea of who that's going to be with that as Aelin for their cosplay of Minfilia. Pray you are first place. Seriously, so amazing. <sighs> we were just blown away by this cosplay, if you wouldn't mind me saying. I, I let the other judges know. It's just like, I, I'm looking at it, and I'm almost like, her and the way she made this is almost, it looks better than it does in the game. Like, the way, the, the textures and the colors that were used, the leathers and the foam work and the wig work and the pose and you, the, they let us, they showed us throughout the progress photos, how they tried to work on the bracers and that they tried several different techniques and they posted pictures of the different techniques that they went through to arrive at the technique that they thought gave them the look that they were going for. And that was really fun for us to go with the whole thing, immaculate, beautiful, stunning, like, I, 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 I was taking notes. <laughs> 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 I think, I think for all of us out there taking notes from Aelin is definitely going to be a good idea. And a big congratulations on first place. And of course that comes with the 20 million gil plus the choice of dragon, rabbit, or cat accessory from Turtle Smithy and, and the painted bust or full body color artwork from Pillow Boat. So a really big congratulations out there to you, Aelin. Your Memphilia cosplay was amazing for the the only word that i can really come up with because it is just that good and that is going to conclude our cosplay contest but melinda i'd love to get some final thoughts from you as the organizer of this event again well thank you so much for having me back and um i i just want every person who entered to know thank you so much for entering like it's always you know unsure of like who's going to see and and, con and contribute and everyone really did an amazing job just about everybody had very thorough documentation on their costumes and it was the most difficult lunar con to decide the winners because of how much people just really pulled pulled forward this year so thank you so much for entering for everybody who entered 
Yeah, a big thank you for entering. It, it it can be a very scary thing to do, but we really appreciate the fact that you did and it made LunarCon 2023 just that much more special. And of course, I want to give a big shout out and a big thank you to our judges, Aka Kiyoka, Crystal, and Jahara Jade for their hard work and of course the unenviable position of having to choose a winner. Thank you so much, you three. Woo! Of course, yeah. it was an honor. Yeah, thank <laughs> you for having us. This was really fun. Let's go and again. <laughs> LunarCon, LunarCon 2024. That's all I'm saying. Hope, right, if you didn't caught. enter this, yeah, if you didn't enter this year, you should do it next year. It's really, yeah. really fun. Yay! All right, and that is going to conclude things here for the Housing Art and Cosplay Contest panel, but we do have more exciting action ahead with Rook coming on to take over to begin their panel for, wait a second, wait a sec, actually, the Final Fantasy XIV oh, um, actually. Actually, <laughs> um, actually game show. And uh, yeah, we want to say a big thank you to Lithy as well for doing all the behind the scenes production and giving us some good chime-ins every now and again. So Lithy, big thank you for that. We will see all of you shortly with Rook taking over.